Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon John 12 Verses 20-24 Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone, but if it dies, it produces much grain. I think that our Saviour looked upon these Greeks as a sort of vanguard of the great army of Gentiles who would come to him as the result of his death, but he fixed his eyes upon the cause rather than the result, and so he began to talk about that death of his, and how it was that it would work such glorious results. If you want a corn of wheat to grow, you must put it into the ground. It must be resolved into its primary particles, for that is what, to die, means, and then it must spring up, again, with newness of life, or else it can never be multiplied. It was so with the Lord Jesus, himself. It is still so with us, it is in proportion as we, ourselves, shall be prepared to die that we shall be prepared to give life to others. 25. He that loves his life shall lose it, and he that hates his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. To hoard your energies will be really to destroy them, like hoarded wheat which, in the end, becomes useless. But to give up your energies, to expend your life forces, this is to sow the wheat, and this is the way to ensure the harvest. 26. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. Do not let him invent some new method of service, let him follow me. If you would do Christ a service, it cannot be by will worship, or by any way of your own devising. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. 26. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. He shall be with me in tribulation. He shall be with me in humiliation, and he shall ultimately be with me in triumph and in glory. 26. If anyone serves me, him will my father honor. Those servants of Christ who follow at their master's heel and do his bidding at all times, are the true knights of the king who win the honors that God alone can give. 27. Now is my soul troubled and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Often, my brothers and sisters, should we be checked in prayer if we would be as wise as our Lord? What shall I say? Shall I ask to be delivered from sickness? Shall I ask that I may not endure troubles which are the common lot of men? Shall I pray to be screened from persecution? You see, I am rendering our Lord's question into our language, bringing it down from the lofty height of his divine thoughts to the level of our poor humanity. We must often pause before we pray, and say with our Lord, for this cause came I unto this hour. Have I not been brought here on purpose to suffer? Have I not been led to this place that I may glorify God by submitting to all his will? Therefore, sometimes let us check ourselves in prayer lest we should ask what is not for our own good or for God's glory. The next word of the Saviour will give us liberty enough, for he went on to say, 28. Father, glorify your name. When we are pleading about that glorious name of Jehovah, we may pray with vehemence and importunity, Father, whatever I do or suffer, 
glorify your name. 28, 29. Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it, and will glorify it again. The people therefore, that stood by, and heard it, said that it thundered, others said, an angel spoke to him. Ah, they did not understand the voice of God, or the cause of the voice speaking to them. If the men of the world in our Saviour's day did not understand the Father's voice to the only begotten, do not expect that the men of the world, today, will understand the divine voice in your heart. They will reckon that you are in error and that God has not spoken to you, it has only thundered. They will be ready to invent all kinds of stories of angels and I know not what, so as to get rid of the voice of God to you. But you know it, if you are God's children, you know his voice and you also know what he means when he speaks. 3032. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world, now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This is the sermon which has the Greeks for a text. They are already coming, being drawn to Christ, but when he dies, when he is lifted up upon the cross, instead of losing his attractive power, he will have greater drawing force than ever, I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. 33, 34. This he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him. As they were always doing, capaciously answering, not answering him with sentiments that responded to his but replying against him with their cavilling. 34-41. We have heard out of the law that Christ abides forever, and how can say you, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you for he that walks in darkness knows not where he goes. While you have light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. These things spoke Jesus, and departed, and did hide himself from them. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke, Lord, who has believed our report. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes, and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah, when he saw his glory, and spoke of him. It is an awful thing to resist the Spirit of God, for if his softening influences are withdrawn, the heart grows hard. If his enlightening influences are taken away, the eyes of the understanding are darkened. I believe there are many who have so long trifled with conscience and violated the best instincts of their nature that they are given up as those who are past hope. I pray God that it may not be so with any here. But it was so with many in the generation among which Christ labored. 42. Nevertheless among the chief rulers also many believed on him. Christ has his secret followers in the darkest days. There are men who believe in him even when the current of infidelity runs most strongly. 42, 43. But because of the Pharisees they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. For which they deserved great censure. 
Yet some of them cast away their cowardice at the last, for Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus were among those who confessed their love to the crucified Christ. 44-49 Jesus cried and said, He that believes on me, believes not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that sees me sees him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whoever believes on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hears my word, and believes not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejects me, and receives not my words, has that which judges him, the words that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say, and what I should speak. Christ did not pride himself upon being a great original thinker. He took his words from his Father's mouth, and the preacher of the gospel is to be no inventor of new thoughts. The thoughtful man of whom we hear so much is just a man who is rebellious against God. The Lord's true servant is to repeat God's thoughts, not his own, to borrow from the scriptures, to borrow from the teaching of the Holy Spirit, even as the Lord Jesus Christ did. 50. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting, whatever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. If the great head of the church was thus only a messenger, the deliverer of a message from the Father, should not we, who at our best are such poor ministers of Christ, take heed to it that we, also, can say, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. God grant it. Amen.